how statistics are used and skewed with the minority to push an agenda because we lack cognitive thinking and we lack discipline over our emotions. Hey everyone, thank you again for joining me on this beautiful day, but you know what, whenever you choose to join me, morning, afternoon, nighttime, evening, late at night, it doesn't matter. I appreciate the likes, the looks, the listens, and of course I'd appreciate you hitting that subscribe and notification bell on my YouTube channel, Brooklyn Baritone. Of course, do that if you want to, no pressure from me whatsoever. I know most of us would like to believe that we are in full control of our emotions. I know I try to do it. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. But what about you? What about when you come across a piece of information, whether someone comes and brings it to you, word of mouth, or you discover something, you're on social media, you're looking at news, reading a news article, and something that may hit you directly, more than other people. If you have a little bit of um, a dog in a fight, as they would say, you have a little bit more, more, you're more influenced by it. If you're moved in a certain way, how much does it take to actually move you to be swayed by that piece of information that you've gotten? Are you willing to do any due diligence or are you already articulate enough in a certain matter where you know that maybe what I'm reading or what I'm hearing is not the whole narrative and I know better? Well, it's a billion dollar, if not quadrillion dollar industry or more to have a swayed by psychology. It's not just psychologists and you sitting in a, in a chair or in, in a sofa telling the psychiatrist of your hopes and your dreams and your hurts and everything. No, you have to understand everything that we look at, everything we engage in, it's made to make it very desirable for us to want it. All these commercials, all these products that we, all these services that people want to get our money for, they make it as attractive and alluring as possible. That's not just by chance or happenstance. That's actual legitimate science behind it. Science that has been behind studying us to know what pulls at our heartstrings. And that goes with news and even worse, agendas. Agendas that shape our social structures and shape our laws. Case in point, let me go down this little slight rabbit hole to give you an idea of the bigger picture of what we're dealing with here. You know, there's a lot of questionable agendas, especially as of late. But what I've noticed is that they always use a statistical minority to sway the narrative to whatever agenda is being pushed. Now, I'm going to co come across these four different examples here. And, you know, one or two of them may be a bit sensitive, but you know what? I'm not here just to be to worry about people being sensitive. I'm talking about and trying to articulate a bigger picture of what's been part of our regular life that most of us don't give a second thought to. First one, probably the hardest one, heaviest one, the whole recent thing when it comes to the Roe versus Wade. And you saw the protesters, you heard people's hurt feelings and their opinions about that being overturned, um, or at least the revisiting of that. Well, when you look at it, serious and severe, as a pregnancy, especially a pregnancy, or just an act of sexual abuse, rape, grape, whatever the album is going to do, they may try to, do, well, I'm not monetized, but they may try to, you know, flag it, but whatever. I have to say things straight up. When it comes to rape and having conception of a child from that act, people really use that as their platform. People always use, hey, I want to be able to have an abortion if I wanted to. Well, what about rape? Unfortunately, it's a thing that happens. None of us can condone it. It's a terrible thing. None of us should condone it. It shouldn't be happening in the first place. But then going back to the whole Roe versus Wade thing, the whole agenda that they was pushing, that you always heard people stand up and utilizing rape as their platform. The thing about that is, coming from many different resources I checked online, this one I pull from healthresearchfunding.org is one of many. Rape only constitutes for 5% of pregnancy. It happens, unfortunately. But the fact of the matter is it is 5%, about 5% of all pregnancies. 
I covered this before in a, in a, in a past podcast. So that means well, about 95% of sexual engagement intercourse is all consensual. So that means 95% of the people who was trying to use who were trying to use rape as a platform to say it's okay to have an abortion to kill a life, they're trying to use that as their platform and vehicle so they can go ahead and have a convenience for their promiscuous lifestyle. I want to have sex as much as I want, however I want, whoever I want it with, but I don't want the consequences of having a child. The one thing that we do to have a child, you just want to be just real, just, just practical with it. You just want to be come see, come saw about it. But then you want to use something as traumatic as rape to justify you being a loose person. Again, less than 5% constitutes of all pregnancies. The way they go on, you would think it'll be 50%, 30%, 70%. It is not. Going forward is something a little bit lighter, okay? It's not gonna be all doom and gloom. Again, another sensitive subject. So many people, so much thing, we have been bombarded with a lot of LGBTQ criteria. We have a lot of coverage in the media and entertainment because now just about every movie has a bit of LGBTQ lifestyle mentions of it is influenced by a lot of things that we watch and read now. So you would think that it's about 30% of the population, 40% of the population that identifies this group. I'm not attacking this group. I'm just looking at the whole picture of the facts of how we are swayed, how psychology is being used against us because we lack discipline. Less than 10% of the population, at least in America, identify as LGBTQ. Less than 10% of the population identifies as LGBTQ. But you would think that at least 50% of the population identifies as that. When it's less than 10% of the population, why is it that they start to now make up the majority of what's being pushed out in comic books, TV shows, even in children's cartoons? Children's cartoons. They have the drag queen library reading. They have so much things that are promoting this. And now they're even at the point where they are teaching children about this and telling them to not tell your parents anything about this. Keep it a secret. As far reaching as this, I'm gonna say propaganda and agenda is, I'm not hating anybody, I'm just talking the truth. They make up only 10% of the population, but why is it they're taking over the majority, the lion's share of what we see, what we read, what we interact with, and what we have to comply with now? On to the next subject of how statistics are used and skewed with the minority to push an agenda because we lack cognitive thinking and we lack discipline over our emotions. One of my favorites I've heard for the past few years is everything being gluten free. Everything gotta be gluten free, gluten free, gluten free, gluten free donuts, gluten free bread, gluten free grapes, gluten free hats, whatever it is, it's gluten free now. Only about 1.4% of the global population Say it again, 1.4% of the global population will have an allergy to gluten. That is celiac disease. That's basically people who can't ingest gluten in their, in their intestines, their digestive systems, and it causes inflammation. It does happen, but for the global, you're talking about eight point something billion people, or 1%, 1.4%. And in North America, that's 0.5% in North America. Mind you, the amount of gluten-free products I've seen have raised up expo exponentially. You, there's no way you cannot notice it. And there's people who are asking for gluten-free things that never had a gluten-related allergy whatsoever. I get it. We should have things, of course, that cater to people who may suffer from this. I'm not saying they'll take it off the shelves. They don't need it too bad, too sad for them. What I'm saying is, why is it that so much of the food industry responded and we responded when the media talked about gluten-free, 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 gluten allergies, gluten allergies, gluten allergies. You would think that there'll be a pile of bodies on, the, on every street corner filled up two or three stories of people who died because of gluten allergies. When the whopping majority, overwhelming majority of us 
don't have that. Why is it everything's gluten free and it's being paraded as such? The thing about gluten, gluten is the protein of wheat. That's the protein function. So we're eating bread or anything that may have bread or flour in it. We're just getting straight starch. At least when we have the starch with the gluten, at least let us get some of the protein. They done took out the protein out the bread. Okay. And then when people say, where are you going to get your protein from if you don't eat meat? Well, now I guess what? Even those other things you can get protein from, but the majority of the public don't know how to get proper protein. You only need to get it from meat. And that's a whole nother story. One of the last things I want to talk about as far as us being manipulated by numbers, by psychology, by lack of discipline for having control over our own emotions to be swayed so easily. On the flip side, lactose intolerance, the dairy industry, they are going strong. They are going strong every day. They are pushing milk out. They are sitting here sucking the, the, the lactate gold from these cows, from these, these, these bovine provide. Meanwhile, six, 8% of the world's population, six, that's the majority of the world's population has a level of lactose intolerance. I'm going to note that just about all ethnicities that are non-Caucasian. So that's the majority of the world have lactose intolerance yet. And still that's being pushed and promoted, especially here in North America and other countries too, where people have milk, have dairy products, have cheese, all these things. It's, it's a big industry, but why is it that's that's they're making so much money, made so much money pushing this for decades. You know, I haven't seen a commercial in a long time, but for years and years and years for decades, you should see got milk. Meanwhile, majority of the population, can't really enjoy milk the way where, you know, it goes down like a glass of water. It, it, it does something internally, causes gas, causes disruption, causes inflammation. It causes a lot of things and is a key to making phlegm, mucus, inflammation, and other ailments too because of dairy consumption. Meanwhile, the majority of the world has a lactose intolerance. How is it that the dairy industry is making so much money? So basically what I'm saying is that we have to do our due diligence to not be swayed so easily. We have to use our cognitive ability, our God-given intellect to do proper research before we go jump and plunge in and invest our feelings. Because our feelings now will make us pay dearly for something later. Any of these top, top, uh, subjects that I've picked, these topics here are just off the top of my head. I just happen to do a little bit of research with this thing, okay? For the for the abortion thing and the pregnancies, that was at healthresearchfunding.org. There are other websites for the LGBTQ being 10% of the population, less than 10%. That was from the census.gov from America, New United States Census Bureau. 1.4% of the global population or 0.5% of North Americans that are susceptible to celiac disease, gluten intolerance. That's from the Celiac Disease Foundation. That's just one of the ones I put that I looked up. And for the whole 60% of the world being lactose intolerant, that's from the NIH.gov site. So if you want to use these, these um, processes, cool. Do that. I'm not pulling these out of my head. This is something that we lack. We don't have discipline over our feelings. That's why we're so easily swayed by stuff. And then we don't use our God-given intellect to make proper decisions. Anyways, that's all I got for the day. If you guys want to check out more of my content, please feel free to visit my website at www.brooklynbaritone.com. I got a store there. I got merchandise right now. More new stuff coming out too. Have a visit. Look at my content. Check it out. Check out my merch. You have a good time, even at the splash page. I love the splash page. You can see more of my videos on my YouTube channel, Brooklyn Baritone. I'm also on LinkedIn under Corey Ashley. You can find more of me on social media, on Instagram and on Facebook. You can also hear these podcasts, audio, on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music under podcasts. I also air four times a week on local Brooklyn cable television, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Verizon, Optimum, RCN, and Spectrum. Anyways, thank you guys for listening. Hope I give you something to listen to. I hope I give you something to think about. I'm out. Be blessed. Walk good. You will hear from me next time.